We start with an accusation from both China and Russia that the United States is undermining global stability. It came on the final day of President Xi Jinping's state visit to Moscow. Well, there was certainly plenty of pomp and ceremony. The Chinese leader was treated to an orchestral rendition of the Chinese and Russian anthems before moving into the Grand Hall of the Order of St. Catherine for talks. But consider the circumstances, with Russia under heavy international sanctions and increasingly reliant on China. Well, high on the agenda was the war in Ukraine and Beijing's 12-point peace proposal to resolve the conflict, which Vladimir Putin said could be used as a basis to end the war. But the Russian leader said that the West had dismissed the proposals as the basis for talks. We believe that many of the provisions in the peace plan put forward by China are consistent with Russian approaches and can be taken as the basis for a peaceful settlement when they're ready for it in the West and in Kyiv. However, so far we've not seen such readiness on their part. Well, Vladimir Putin also warned that his country would react if the UK goes ahead with a plan to give Ukraine ammunition containing depleted uranium. It looks like the West has definitely decided to fight with Russia till the last Ukrainian, not only by words but by actions. I would like to note that if all this happens, Russia will have to respond accordingly, bearing in mind that the collective West is already beginning to use weapons with nuclear components. Well, following those comments, the UK's Ministry of Defence released this statement saying that the British Army has used depleted uranium in its armour, piercing shells for decades. It's a standard component and has nothing to do with nuclear weapons or capabilities. Well, Russia knows this but is deliberately trying to disinform. Well, President Xi Jinping also referred to Beijing's Ukraine peace plan but was at pains to stress that Beijing was neutral in the conflict. I would like to emphasize that on the issue of the Ukraine crisis, China has always followed the principles of the UN Charter, upholding an objective and fair stance, actively promoting peace talks. China is always standing firmly on the side of peace, dialogue and on the right side of history. So let's go through what China's 12-point plan for Ukraine actually involves. Well, it calls for the sovereignty of all countries, but does not specifically say that Russia must withdraw its troops from Ukraine. It condemns the use of unilateral sanctions against Moscow, an implicit criticism of Ukraine's Western allies. There's a call for the establishment of humanitarian corridors, for the evacuation of civilians and steps to ensure the export of grain. And the plan calls for an end to the Cold War mentality, and that's a term understood to refer to America's global dominance. Well, China's leaders meeting with Vladimir Putin comes at the end of a busy couple of days for President Xi. Earlier, he sat down with the Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin and announced to state media that he's extended an invitation to President Putin to visit Beijing at a time that works for him this year. And he also said that China would prioritize what he called an all-round strategic partnership with Russia. So how did all this diplomatic nicety go down with the people of Moscow? On the one hand, Xi's visit is very good. On the other hand, we must stand our ground as well and not cave in. Time will show. They are themselves in an uneasy situation now, so maybe they want to work closely together with us as well. The visit is important to maintain relations with the closest neighbors. All Europe has sanctioned us. We hope it's not for long and sometime things will restore and the European countries will treat us the same. China is a friendly country and we hope for more cooperation with them. Well, the U.S. has made its feelings about the visit very clear, calling on President Xi to urge Vladimir Putin to withdraw his troops from Ukraine. Efforts to end this conflict must take Ukraine's position into account. And so we encourage President Xi to play a constructive role by speaking with President Zelensky, which he has not done since Russia launched this invasion. Because China, quite frankly, we believe, should hear directly from the Ukrainians and not just from the Russians. And we encourage President Xi to press President Putin directly on the need to respect Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The world and China's neighbors will certainly be watching closely. 
So the West is watching and with growing anxiety, and the fear is that China might start sending military aid, potentially including artillery shells, to Russia. Western governments have repeatedly warned China against supplying Russia with arms, and images like these are heightening those concerns. These were joint exercises in the Gulf of Oman last week involving the naval forces of China, Russia and Iran. However, they're centered on research and rescue and other non-combat missions. Well, NATO Secretary General has become the latest to warn Beijing not to supply Russia with weapons. Uh, we haven't seen any proof that uh, China is uh, delivering lethal uh, weapons to Russia. Uh, but we have uh, seen uh, some signs that uh, this has been a request uh, from Russia and that this is an issue that uh, is, cons is, is uh, considered uh, 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 in Beijing or by the Chinese authorities. And therefore, our message has been that China should not provide lethal aid to, uh, to, uh, to Russia. Well, Chinese official media are hailing the friendship between the country and Russia. In an op-ed published in Russian media on Monday, President Xi said that the two sides uphold the concept of generations-long friendship and win-win cooperation, adding that the two sides firmly support each other in pursuing development paths that suit their respective national conditions. Well, here's one Russian analyst on the significance of this article. I think one of the main points in President Xi Jinping's article is that the friendship between China and Russia has stood the test of time. Although the international situation is very complicated for both Russia and China, the two sides have maintained exchanges and interactions. But what do people on the streets of Beijing make of it all? Just listen to this. I think President Putin is a strong and capable leader. His policy towards the outside world protects the rights of Russian citizens very well. We call him Emperor Putin. We feel like he is very awesome. I'm not that old. When I took political classes and paid attention to international news, President Putin has always been there. I only know about the previous presidents from history books. There's more reports about him, and most are positive. So as a foreigner, my attitude towards him is quite friendly. Well, from one visit to another, Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is in Ukraine and he's been visiting Bucha. These images show him being accompanied through the city by military officials. Tokyo has voiced support for Ukraine since the beginning of the war and has joined other G7 countries in extending sanctions against Russia. Mr Kishida had been the only G7 leader not to visit Ukraine until today. As I step on the ground of Bucha today, I really feel great anger for all the atrocious acts. I would like to give my heartfelt condolences to all the victims and the wounded on behalf of the Japanese nationals. He also met Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv and he expressed his support for and solidarity with Ukraine. Now, Japan and China see each other as regional rivals, and since Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Tokyo has provided Kyiv with a mixture of humanitarian, financial and non-lethal military aid. Well, let's discuss all of this with Professor Mary Gallagher, Director of the Center for Chinese Studies at the University of Michigan. Professor Gallagher, welcome. When it comes to China, how likely is it that they could potentially start sending weapons, that sub military support for Russia? Because we know they've been expanding their military production quite vigorously. They're the fourth largest now global military um, might. So could they send arms to Russia? They certainly could. I think it would be a, a very major shift in their policy. It would create a huge uproar within the Western alliances, and it would create a very long, drawn-out war, which China uh, does not want to see. So I'm a little bit skeptical that China will actually um, provide weapons to Russia. That's interesting. But in terms of when, when China describes itself as being neutral and it offers up this 12-point plan, specifically, it doesn't talk about Russia having to withdraw from Ukraine. That's something that Ukraine absolutely insists as a precondition for any talk. So can China realistically be neutral? No, I don't think it can be neutral. Uh, no one believes it to be neutral. I mean, the fact that uh, at the last Beijing Olympics, Putin and Xi met, 
uh, right before the invasion. Uh, she gave his support, maybe or not knowing about the invasion fully. But since that time, this has really been a decision that he hasn't been able to back away from. I think many people, even within China, feel that that policy was a mistake, but it has really made it very difficult for Xi, who never admits that he's wrong, uh, that he uh, made a mistake in aligning himself with Russia so closely right before the invasion. And when it comes to this 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 plan that China is putting forward, this this so-called blueprint, is it is it potentially a blueprint from what it could be thinking about in terms of its ambitions for Taiwan? It's interesting. I mean, there's a lot of differences between Ukraine and Taiwan. For example, China recognized the sovereignty of Ukraine back in 1991 after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, which is not at all uh, like the status of Taiwan, which is relatively, it's completely unresolved. And so for uh, Ukraine to serve as an example uh, or of the future of what could happen with Taiwan, it really doesn't function well. It also, of course, the the problems that Russia has had in a quick victory in Ukraine also make it really problematic for the Chinese government to see Ukraine as uh, the future for Taiwan. And we know that Volodymyr Zelensky, Ukraine's leader, has been calling for a telephone conversation with President Xi Jinping. And arguably, what understanding is it's not happened yet. What's your thinking? What's your thinking behind that not happening so far? It'll be interesting to see if it happens. It should happen uh, this week. It hasn't yet to happen. She has had no contact with the Ukrainian president all throughout this conflict. And it really makes China seem like a not very faithful partner in a peace process if it has yet to talk to even one, one of the sides. Professor Gallagher from the University of Michigan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.